Slumlord lost his business over $300 security deposit. I rented a little house from a man who owned a painting business. The power was off when we came to see the property but he assured us everything worked, even put it in the contract. The place was dirty and poorly maintained so we negotiated the security deposit down to $300. Turned out the heat slash air didn't work, along with the refrigerator and dishwasher. I asked him to have someone look at them. He cursed me up and down. He called and left threatening voicemails. He would show up unannounced and let himself in. On one of the visits, I showed him that the crawl space was flooded and was a breeding ground for thousands if not millions of cockroaches and mosquitoes that would come up through the floor vents. There was absolutely no ductwork even though he claimed the heat slash air worked fine. He accused me of causing the flood myself even though I showed him the source was a pipe that had rusted through. He refused to address any problems and said, if you don't like it then you can move. You can't pay for a bargain and expect to live in the Ritz. This man was a terrible man in general. Once he hired someone off Craigslist to cut down a tree in the rental property's yard. The man worked literally all day for the agreed $150, cut up and hauled off the tree. He came back that evening, just standing in the yard. I asked if I could help him. He said he was waiting for the owner to get paid. The owner kept replying saying he was on the way but never showed up. Our neighbor told us he had punched the previous renter in the face and refused to pay him for a day's work for his company. He had bragged about renting to illegal immigrants and not having to do anything because they wouldn't sue. We had a newborn baby so we called his bluff and agreed to find a new place to live. We left the home in much better shape than we found it. He said he would mail us the security deposit but never did. He dodged my phone calls until one day he called to say, you aren't getting it back. You broke the contract when you left early, so go F yourself. I was really upset because we were new parents and had very little money. That $300 was a big deal to us and a drop in the bucket for this man. He owned an upscale painting business and had 15 rental properties. The next week, I was online leaving negative reviews for his business when I clicked a link and noticed his website's domain had just lapsed. I knew what I had to do. I immediately bought it, then created a homepage with contact info for his biggest competitor. I emailed him from his old domain, asking him if he wanted to buy the website for $320. The cost of the security deposit plus the price I paid for the domain. He was irate. He started calling my work, threatening to sue my employer. He even contacted my parents and threatened to sue them. He left a bunch of threatening voicemails for me, saying he was going to beat me up and he knows where I live and he has my social security number. I received emails from several review sites asking if I was trying to update the contact info for the business. He must have used his old domain's email as his contact email. I didn't want to get in trouble for impersonating his business so I did not respond. The contact info was never changed. I received a few emails from potential clients. I called him and told him about the painting job requests. I gave him the contact info for one of the clients to prove I wasn't just making it up. I told him it was the last time I was going to do that for him, and suggested he buy the website back in order to not miss out on any other jobs. He told me he was taking me to court. I told him I had recorded his threatening phone calls and saved all his texts and voicemails. He said he was going to sue me for illegally recording him, not illegal in my state. I said, I look forward to seeing you in court where I counter sue and press charges for harassing me, and I hung up. He called back and cussed me out for hanging up on him. I said, call me back when you can speak respectfully to me, and hung up again. We repeated this about five times, each time he was angrier until the last time. He spoke respectfully and explained he hadn't got a single job in months. I suggested he focus more on creating a website to find business. He lost it and cussed me out again. Six months passed and he still hadn't bought the website from me. I get a call from him, begging me to do the right thing and give him the website back. I told him the current price was $350. Six months later, I get another phone call. I told him the current price is $380. Eventually, he texted me to say, I went out of business. I hope you're happy. I responded, I hear having a website really helps your business. $380 and it's yours. He told me what a terrible person I am and said, karma's a witch. I responded, maybe if you stop trying to rip people off, your karma wouldn't be so bad. That was the last time I ever heard from him.
The major business listing sites confirmed his business did indeed close. I renewed the domain for another two years just in case he was bluffing. A few months later, I drove by his office to see if it was still there. It was empty with a for rent sign posted. I never got that $300 back and spent money on domain registrations but it was totally worth it. TLDR Slumlord unjustly kept my security deposit so I bought his website. I put his competitor's contact info on the homepage. I offered to sell it back to him for the price of the security deposit. He refused and threatened to sue me repeatedly. He wound up losing his business. Edit, I removed pricing and domain renewal timeline because I was estimating and it was bothering people. It was in 2013 through GoDaddy. Now to the comments. Why would he refuse to pay the dollar 300 plus, it's so unreasonable. He considered life a zero sum game. He can't win unless someone else loses. He simply couldn't stand the idea of losing at life, and would lie cheat and steal to make sure he didn't. And since giving OP his money back, giving it to him would count as losing. He was so determined not to let that happen that he ruined his business. There's probably a mental disorder involved. To consider going broke like this a better option over paying a few hundred he genuinely owes. But I don't know what it would be. That's just crazy, I'm surprised he even made it that far in life, with that mentality. Great revenge, bet that was satisfying. OP replied. Yeah, my co-worker and good friend used to send me emails through the website's contact form asking for quotes all the time. We would spend so much time laughing about it. Ha, sounds like good fun. Glad the jerk landlord got what he deserved. Nice and thorough. You even managed to maintain your cool through it all. Does he still have the properties? Are there certain city inspection services that might want to do things? Maybe have a look. OP replied. Thanks. I don't know. He probably does. I did report the property I rented. I figure I have gone far enough though. If he contacts me again, I will go further. But it has been years so I doubt that will happen. You certainly did enough. And I do really like the offering it back all the way through. He just couldn't stand the thought of losing to you that he rode that ship right into the ground. I have had a similar situation with the phone call thing. A bullying co-worker swore at me over the phone and I hung up. Ten times I hung up because he kept calling up swearing and saying I can't hang up on him. Click. Repeat. It was so much fun that I was killing myself laughing with another co-worker who I was riding with who could hear the first one on the phone. Good times. Please tell me you somehow found a way to take the social security threat specifically somewhere. You seem to insinuate you did, because that's actually a pretty significant threat and you could have probably ducked him on that itself if it was recorded or in text. He's basically threatening to either duck up your identity or stalk you. That had to really duck him. OP replied. I talked to the police but they said there was nothing they could do unless he misused it. I signed up for credit monitoring. It turned out to be a blessing in disguise because I learned my credit was in the 400s, and I was able to clear up a bunch of stuff, and it went up a bunch, enough for me to be able to get a mortgage. Now it is at 800. Nice. I'm glad karma curved you some brilliance. As someone who has been screwed over by a slumlord, I salute you. My tiny joy is when I get emails telling me I've got another 1000 views or so on my Google Maps photos of the shit on my lawn from when they wouldn't fix a plumbing problem. I've made an SEO nightmare for them but they've never done anything about it. They have hundreds of terrible reviews. OP replied. Yeah, that was my plan before I saw his domain up for sale. You have to be a special type of poop person to screw innocent people over like they do. I have no remorse, as I am sure you don't either. The neighbors told me what a piece of crap he is. We heard some stories about him that made me scared of him, mostly how he punched the previous tenant in the face for demanding he get paid for an honest day's work. The violence adds an extra terrifying level. I just dealt with a run-of-the-mill slumlord and his run-of-the-mill slumlord property managers. Thankfully, no physical threats. 
except from our horde neighbor when they evicted him and he started coming after us, that was fun. We called the police a lot for a few days. Oh, and when the neighbors across the courtyard got in a fight and the boyfriend threw the cast iron patio furniture through all of their windows, great times.